Hi guys, welcome back to another iPhone tutorial. This is going to be using the NSXML parser. And the reason why this isn't a web service tutorial is because my server is currently having a bit of a fight with me. It keeps deleting the stuff I put online. Um, stuff that's already there from my previous tutorials is still running fine. I checked them all, they're still running and no problem. Just whenever I try to upload new things, it's deleting them on me. No idea why, so I'm just making this a local tutorial. But if you change the, the path, you're going to see now in two minutes to. Um, your URL the same way it is my PDF story, it'll work perfectly. It's just this is it doesn't work for me for some reason. Okay, I started with a mass detail project, so nothing's changed except I've already made the XML file. Okay, so you can see here every XML file starts off with the XML tag and the encoding has to size the encoding, and then you have the hierarchy. Okay, it doesn't show very well in, in this because it doesn't highlight the um. The, the hierarchy at all, but the parent is prices, okay, and it ends down here. Then in between that, you got three main three um, objects inside, all called price, okay. I know it's kind of bad calling them prices and price, but this kind of made more sense at the time. So each price object has four strings in it: a name. Um, okay, let's use the strings, not ints. It's just easier because we're going to put them into um labels and stuff later on which are all tech, uh, strings, so let's leave them as that. Uh, four, three prices and one name, so all strings, same for ID 2 and 3, so the ID is the identifier, okay, that'll be able, that'll allow us to identify between them later on. Okay, so you can copy that down or I can just wait till I'm finished and get the source code. So, first thing we want to do is keep our, our code really tidy, okay, so we're going to make the um, same way they did in all the tutorials, but most of them, make the data object separate, so let's call it um, list. Create and in here, okay, we're going to make a few um, properties. Property atomic retain. I'm going to copy and paste this a few times because I don't want to keep typing it out over and over again. Okay, now as you saw, we had a few things. So, in a string name, in a string beer, in a string uh, cider. More, I forgot something there, didn't I? In a string Guinness. Yes. Now, you may notice there's actually one more thing we didn't have there, which is the NS, the uh, ID, but NS integers you don't want to retain, you want to be read write. Also, NS integer you don't. You don't use the uh, asterisk. No, we'll leave that out and just call it uh, drink ID. Perfect. Okay, dog. And synthesize cider, beer, Guinness, name, and drink ID. Of course, we're sticking with the whole Irish drinking thing. You know, I might as well keep it close to my heart and liver. Okay, that's done. Very big. Probably no more alterations to this file. This is just our data model. We'll add them all to our um, this later on in our parser file. We want to keep the parser separate because the parser has three big methods in it. We want to keep out of the delegate or any class we're going to use. So we're going to make a file called it's called um, the parser or just parser. Okay, so this is going to be our workhorse. We're going to use this, initialize this in our delegate later on, and use this to do all the work for us, and then simply use results in class we want later on. So, this is where all the work can be done. So we have to have a few things here. First of all, we need to import the app delegate because we're going to be initializing this in the delegate, but we want to have access to the, to the delegate's methods. Also, import um, list because obviously we're working with list objects, and because we're going to be using going to delegate the XML parser to our class, we have to make this an XML parse delegate. And then we want to make a few little um, header files, app delegate, app for a singleton axis, you've probably seen it before in my tutorials, uh, list, the list, and ns mutable string, current element value. Don't worry if you don't understand what this is going to be used for just yet. It's uh, X XML is a bit, um, bit tricky, but you'll understand by the end. And because we want to use this in our class, we want to initialize this in our class, 
init parser. Okay, so we're going to be calling this in the class to all our work from delegate. Okay, so I keep talking about delegates. So let's go to delegate now and let's set it up for what we're going to use it for. Okay, because the parser is going to be used here, import the parser. Perfect. Now, give yourself a lot of room here just so we can see what's going on. Nothing's going to be changed here. Our implementation is going to be the same as always. Um, it's going to be loaded using the default setup, but we need to actually specify where we want the file to be read from. So, ns string called path equals ns bundle, main bundle, resource path, resource path, okay, string by appending path component, perfect, and it's called prices.xml. Perfect. Okay, so we're telling it that we're going to read a file from this path. So, but for the parser to work, parser doesn't work with just a path. It has to be a data object. So ns data, called data, equals ns data, oops, no, nope, ns data, a lock in it with data. Nope. In it with contents of file, in it with contents of file, much got to better myself there, path, and now ns xml parser, X, let's call it um, xml parser equals ns xml parser a lock in it with data. There we go, there's data object. I was too far ahead of myself. Okay, now because we're going to be using the parser in this class, we're going to um, in, uh, initialize it here. So parser, the parser equals parser a lock in it with in a parser. So we're initializing that in a parser will start off all our um, implementation later on. So we'll set it up now. Now we've just set the delegate here because we're going to be delegating this to another class. So XML parser, which is the as uh, the XML parser um, object, set delegate the parser. Now, if you hadn't set the this here in the parser.h file, you'd be getting a warning. If you have set it, it'd be no problem whatsoever. Okay. Uh, what we can do here is we can run a an error checker. Okay, we probably should because this is quite quite a lot of code to go through, and it's probably best we have it here. So, um, did it do? Yes, make a boo. Boolean worked. If worked, NS log EA. Um, else, probably do a alert view here. It's seizures rather than NS log and everything, but NS log boo. A alert view would be a lot easier. To, well, it'll tell you straight away if it works or not, but. We want to find out if this works, but uh, we're not going to do just yet because we actually haven't done our parser object yet properly. We haven't set up all the work. Now, this is going to be a long tutorial because there's a lot in this, and I'm going to be changing things as we go through to handle other bits and bobs. So I'm just going to decide now what can we get done. Okay, I'm going to, first I'm going to show you what the um, the main method we're going to be using in the parser. And I'm going to stop here and start fresh next. Okay. ID, you probably wonder why I get a warning because we haven't initialized the parser in it. Parser, and you'll be getting a, a warning because incomplete. Okay, set it up. If self equals equals super in it. Um, now we're going to, this is the only thing we do here is set up our singleton access. Our singleton access is going to allow us to access the DM, the delegates, the delegate class by one simple accessor type. So app equals equals app delegate, so we're casting it. UI application, oh no, UI application, uh, shared application, delegate, done. So if I even made a, an array of two objects in the delegate and I typed app.array count, it'll give me the count of the, of the, the array in the delegate. Very handy, but it's, you don't want to do it too often. Your best, um, 
keep and single access to a minimum because you don't want to give too many classes access to class they shouldn't be talking to. That's why we always set up these data models and have the class talk to them rather than the view controller passing directions to each class. Okay, so now for the big monster methods. Okay, so parser. Here we go. Parser did start element. Where are you? Did start element. Qualify name. Did it do? That is the one. Okay. As you can see, this is quite a big method. It's not the only one we need. We need two more. Void. Parser. Did it do? Found characters. This is quite a small one. And then. Parser. Oops, sorry, not void. Parser did and elements do parser qualified name to do, do Q name perfect. Okay, so what this essentially means is that it's going to start off. We're going to start off on an element, okay, and we're going to check what elements it's going to read, and then we're going to do append. Um, if things aren't, if the element isn't there yet, we will create it or append stuff to it and then we'll once we find what we want we'll add it to our data object. If you've did some of my old my, my, my first JSON tutorial, it's similar. So the connection did um receive data, append it and then you do your workings once it ends on the element. So that's what we're gonna be doing these. I don't want to start these now because they're quite long and it might take two or three more stories to get through another two probably to get through this all. So I'm gonna leave it here. We just created our set up everything then we're going to go through all these we're going to go through what i'm going to be trying to get at and then we'll actually make this application work okay folks join me soon for the next tutorial bye now